In this video, I'm going to show you how I made $150,000 from only one client as a software engineer. But before I do so, why should you even listen to me? My name is Vigo. I landed my first six-figure software engineer job in my junior year of university. I then went on to work at various Fortune 500 companies, such as the one listed here. And then I went on to actually found my own B2B consulting firm. And actually in October, which is best month to date, this has been my payout. Of course, this is still revenue, not profit. Now, I'm not showing this to flex, I'm not showing this to boast, but rather to show you that it's possible because I did the same exact thing for not only myself, but so many other people. But enough about that. Let's dive straight into what we're actually here to look at and how to make $150,000 from one client. So I'm at the point in my business where I can easily get $150,000 from one client. And it's because of this one specific structure that I've been following for a few years now. And I've spent hundreds and thousands of dollars throughout the past few years to actually perfect this structure. And I'm going to give it to you all for free today. And this is going to teach you mainly how to achieve the highest ROI with the least amount of work. And it's a skeleton outline that you can follow to the T to maximize efficiency in specifically client acquisition. And to actually talk about this structure, this system, we have to familiarize ourselves with what I call the North Stars, right? And just a little context for you, a human being has about 60,000 thoughts every single day. And most of these thoughts aren't gonna be about client acquisition because you have other problems to worry about. But the ones that are gonna be about your client acquisition, we need to make sure that they are optimized. And if you were to bucket your thoughts, they would fall into six key categories. And for each category, you need one to three core goals all aligned with a single North Star. If that didn't make much sense, don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So here we have our initial thoughts, right? There's so many thoughts, 60,000 in a day. And some of these thoughts will be regarding our client acquisition as to how we're going to get clients, especially as a software engineer. And there'll be six categories when it comes to customer-centric approach or just getting clients in the first place. it will be lead generation, lead nurturing, sales, customer retention, referrals, and systems. I'll explain what each one is right now. Let's start with lead generation. So lead generation is, as the name implies, generating leads. Now our North Star, so you can think of this as the core goal, your vision, what you want. Let's assume that we want to generate a thousand qualified leads, right? This is one of the thoughts that are coming in our head. Well, we can set a goal to get to our North Star. If we want to generate a thousand qualified leads, well, if I do 300 new leads every 90 days, then I should eventually get to that thousand leads right? After 270 days, right? I should, I should at least get close to it. And then for me to get the 300 new leads in the next 90 days, then I need to do specific tasks to be able to do that. And if I create lead magnets, maybe send 10 outer messages a day, be it a cold email or text, and, mon and monitor the performance of my outer messages, over time, I'll get there, right? I'll do the tasks, I'll hit my goal, and then after I keep hitting these goals over time and time again, I'll get to my North Star. The same is going to apply to my lead nurturing, right? If I want to convert 20% of my qualified leads into sales-ready prospects where I can close them, right? I can take a look into what I have to do, right? What would my goal be? Well, if I want to convert, let's say, 20% of them, let's say I want to move 50 cold leads to warm status in the next 90 days. So within the next three months. How can I do that? Well, I can nurture cold leads by making sure to actually follow up with them and talking with them, getting on calls with them, and hosting maybe a free webinar once a month to once again teach my leads and turn them into warm prospects. And once I've turned them into these warm prospects, I can then get into the sales process because let's say I wanna make $100,000 a month with my business, right? How do I do that? Well, if I'm accepting a customer for let's say $10,000, then I would need to close 10 customers within the next 90 days to essentially get to that $100,000 a month goal, right? So what I would do then to actually get my 10 customers within the next 90 days, let's say I would do three discovery calls per week, right? I would focus on objection handling and I would focus on streamlining call booking to make sure that all my warm prospects over here actually have an easy time booking calls with me. And I know I'm closing as many people as I can by making sure I'm properly prepared to object to handle objections. And I'm taking as many calls as I can without hindering the inflow. Right? And that would make sure that I can get to my North Star when it comes to sales. Likewise, with customer retention, right? let's say I want to maintain a 90% retention rate. The way I can do that is if I aim for at least 8 out of 10 new customers being acquired by this quarter. right? And to do that, I can schedule check-ins 
I can offer incentives for people to stay around longer. I can essentially send out feedback surveys and see what my audience wants or my clients want, right? And I can identify any issues that there are early by making sure I contact people and I talk with them and maintain proper communication. And then, of course, let's talk about referrals, which is another aspect of client acquisition. But since we decide to keep and nurture our existing clients, right, with regards to customer retention, obviously the next step would be to ask for referrals, right? And let's say we want to get to 20 referrals. Well, we can secure, let's say, 10 referrals in the next three months. That would be our goal. Right. And technically in six months, we should be able to get there. And the task that we can do would be to launch a referral program, possibly send personalized gifts for some of our old clients, uh, feature testimonials on our website or on social media, just to get people to refer other people. And last but not least, let's talk about systems when it comes to client acquisition. Right. If I want to automate, let's say, 50 percent of my customer acquisition process, well, I can set a goal that I should have three automated workflows by this quarter. And then what I can do to that to actually make that a reality, I can automate emails, I can automate payments, and I can possibly connect my lead form with a customer relationship management tool to set up the systems that I need to get to that 50% of the customer acquisition process being automated. Now, these were all the rough examples of what I just gave you, but you should have a clear understanding now that especially when it comes to be it client acquisition, be it marketing, any single form of your business or even in life, really, you can apply this to anything. The reason I'm doing this with client acquisition is because to, to show you this is the exact structure that I followed to make sure to get that $150,000 from my client, right? I initially talked about the lead generation, how I got that lead and then how I nurtured that lead and then I how I sold them on a sales call and then I made sure to retain them over the course of six months, I believe it was, right? Yeah, there you go for six months and then how I got referrals from that client and then how, to, uh, and then how I set up systems to get more of those types of clients every single day, right? And if you're wondering how to actually break things down into yearly, monthly and weekly goals, we can actually do that as well. So we'll have our North Star, right? And we can break it down into yearly, monthly, weekly goals. And then our task should complement these goals. For example, let's say my North Star is I want to generate 2,000 qualified leads. And in this case, I'm assuming this is a yearly goal of mine. So these two will stay the same. Well, if I want 2,000 leads this year, then if I get 500 new leads every 90 days, that should get me to the 2,000 this year. Okay, perfect. If I want 500 monthly leads, then I would need about 40 new leads every single week right? Then we'll need about 40 new leads every single week, approximately, right? The more, the merrier. And for me to get to that 40 leads per week, since that is my weekly goal, well, I can do my tasks. So I can focus on creating lead magnets. I can send maybe 10 outreach messages a day. I can monitor the performance of my existing campaigns if I have anything set up. But what are the less? I can do these tasks on a daily basis to get to my weekly goals. And then my weekly goals will essentially amount to my monthly goals. And then my monthly goals will amount to my Yearly goals. The same thing is going to apply to lead nurturing. If I want to convert 20% of a qualified lead to warm prospects, I can, let, let's say, nurture 400 leads to warm status this year, move 100 cold leads to warm status every three months, right? Nurture 8 to 10 cold leads per week, and then nurture cold leads, follow up, and host a webinar for free per month as my tasks. And you can go ahead and you can go ahead and do this for every single process or category in your North Star, right? So let's say if I want to make 100k a month, right? That's my ideal goal, consistent monthly recurring revenue. And for me to do that, well, I would need to reach a million dollars in sales this year. For me to do that, I would need to close 10 new clients every three months. For me to do that, I would need to hold at least three discovery calls per week. And for me to do that, I would need to learn about objection handling. I would need to know how to streamline my call booking and I would need to learn how to improve my discovery process, right? And the main thing that I want to really emphasize here, my main point as to why I'm talking about all of this is because I want to make sure that all the tasks that we do actually constitute to our goal properly. We want to avoid any tasks that simply just make us look busy and won't contribute to much, right? We always want to make sure the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. And to help you with this, there's really four kind of tasks that you can be doing. High priority tasks, medium priority tasks, low priority, and recurring. So as the name suggests, recurring are going to be tasks that you're going to have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So your outreaches and things like that. Low priority, medium priority, high priority might change on a day-to-day -day setting, but you'll know which ones give you a higher ROI. And let me tell you, 80% of life and business are recurring tasks, right? For example, eating, drinking, sleeping, these are all you have to do. It's just recurring, right? But then the other 20% will be the high, medium, low, and priority tasks that you need to do to get ahead, right? And what we want to do to actually make sure that we can get as far as possible and get as many clients as possible 
and make as much money as possible, we want to work in seven-day cycles called sprints. Now, all the software engineers will be familiar with the Agile sprints, right? And this is very similar, except in a three or four month time frame. This is on a seven day time frame, right? And what you want to do is create a list of goals that you want to reach by the end of the week that helps you reach your North Star in the next year, right? If we take a look at this, we want to start out with our weekly goals to make sure that they'll lead to our monthly and then which will lead to our yearly. So let's go ahead and take a look at just a couple of examples of how I personally have my week actually set up. Monday and Tuesday is when most of my high priority tasks are actually, and that's when they're finished because most businesses, well, they're back after the weekend and this is when everything hits the ground running. And then Wednesday and Thursday is more so for my medium priority tasks. And then finally, Friday, Saturday, it's more so about my little priority tasks as the week's about to be over. And then Sunday, I'm planning the next sprint, so the next week. And remember, the recovering tasks are completed every single day. And one thing to point out is that these specific goals, they're going to be very simple because they're all input-based. For example, your tasks, right? Outreaching 500 prospects, let's say talking with five business owners, creating one hour of content, whatever the case. The aim isn't necessarily to focus on the outcome. So landing the clients or generating the revenue, but rather the priority is maximizing consistent, high quality input. Because as we know from beforehand, input will lead to our output. So we want to make sure that our input is as high quality as possible. And my objective is really structure and organize all these tasks that directly contribute to achieving these input-based goals, right? And this way I can ensure that my efforts remain focused and effective, knowing that the right inputs will eventually lead me to the desired output that I want. And for, to give you a quick example, let's say I want to reach out to a 30 client, right? Well, what would the system be for that? Um, first and foremost, I would define my ideal customer profile. I would define who my ideal client is. Then I would try to identify any problems that I can solve for that ideal customer, right? Then I would include that problem in my outreach message to get them to actually be interested and hook them into what I'm sending them. Then I would refute the message and refine it if need be, and then I would send it. As simple as that. And all the tasks that I do, I break it down like this, and these are what help me actually reach a specific goal for that one specific week, right? And then I put them on a piece of paper or whatever the case to prioritize them. So you have your tasks here and then the priority that you're gonna need to have, right? And if I break it down on a weekly basis, you can think of it, for example, Monday and Tuesday, researching your target industries, outlining common client problems, and then sending five outreach messages, right? Three high priority tasks that you wanna do Mondays and Tuesday. And as the week goes on, you, slow, you move from your high priority to medium to low to planning the next sprint. Now, sometimes you'll have things that might be high priority, but also they might be recurring, right? Depending on the phase of the business you are in, right? When you're first starting off, you need to send outreach messages every single day. Now, once you have a system set up and you're an established business, then you don't have to worry about that because your systems will take care of that for you. But until you get to that point, some things you have to prioritize every single day. And sometimes you'll have to put the high priority into the recurring pile, right? And with that, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.